At the time when I started no-tailing, I had a fairly small farm. I observed a couple of neighbors doing it uh, and uh, had read considerable about it and just decided to try it on myself and, and basically never looked back. When I first started no-tilling, I started with my conventional equipment. And I wanted to use a no-till drill in order to plant uh, soybeans. And so I purchased that and rented it out in order to spread out the use of it. So I was able to use it myself and then spread the cost over other people who were starting to no-till at that time. And so that was my means of uh, getting into the no-till without investing a lot of money in new equipment. Uh, if you think about it, I spend uh, only about half as much time on the tractor and uh, that reduces our fossil fuel needs by about 50 percent. Over the last 10 years on one of my tractors I only put on 1700 hours, 1700 hours, and that was my primary uh, planting tractor and uh, also uh, used on the grain cart, that sort of thing. And so when I sold that tractor, it was actually, I sold it for more money than I paid for it. Whenever we buy or install equipment now, we consider how it might help us in that no-till operation. No-till is not synonymous with no management. So uh, we need to manage and uh, we need to manage not only our planting procedures, but we need to manage our weed control. And so we try to start with uh, clean fields. We try to manage our weeds at the proper time. And with good timing, I use no more chemicals. In fact, probably a, a fewer chemicals than I did when I was uh, doing tillage. We're not deep burying weed seeds. So those weeds that germinate from deep down in the soil are not germinating we may have more of a problem from weeds that germinate on the surface. And so we have to learn to manage those weeds, pay attention to them, and control them at the right time. There are many people that have tried no-till and have become frustrated and discontinued it. But if you stick with it and recognize the problems, I think you'll see long-term benefits. Long-term benefits in terms of water absorption in the soil, long-term benefits with respect to moisture retention, and I think long-term benefits with respect to crop yield. The residue takes some time to begin to break down, perhaps three to five years for there to be an equilibrium there. So at first, I had excess residue, and I had to deal with that as a problem. And if I had no-tilled for two or three years and left that residue on the surface, and then all of a sudden started to till again, I would see that flush of nutrients that were made available through turning under that residue and I would say, see, no-till doesn't work. I started out with the idea of making it work, fertilizing a little heavier to replace the nitrogen that might come from decomposed material, and I've never had that problem. And so as a result of that, my yields have been good. I think they're competitive with others in the area. And in fact, uh, through the moisture conservation in most years, I would say I see a benefit to the no-till.